WA2S Films, an award-winning nonprofit conceived to explore, observe, and produce programs about human-animal interaction. On this episode of The Rescuer's DNA. I know, I love you too. If I can catch them, I'll catch them. If I can't, I can't. Like one day, I was going to the doctors and I had just went to Subway's and ate a bowl of soup, had a whole sandwich. I knew the bus was coming, so I didn't have time to eat my sub. There was a dog coming. It wouldn't come too close to me, but I knew it was hungry, so I unwrapped that sub and I gave the whole sub to the dog. I mean, at least the dog got something to eat that day. And I was happy, I was happy. So what, the sub cost me five bucks, but I don't care, at least the dog got to eat. Since I've been 21, 22, I've been always doing this. I've never had so many dogs in my whole life. As long as the dogs are being fed, taken care of, being vetted and stuff and everything, which I just got these dogs their shots. Stop, hey, hello, you. Hey, you little monkeys. What kind of dogs are these? You know what kind of they are? I don't. I don't, I don't even know what they are either. I know they're cute though, but mm -hmm. people like me who want to do this, that don't have nothing else to do, should be able to do this and be left alone. I live by myself, and just me and my dogs, that's all. I mean, what does dogs do? They don't do nothing. What does people do? People lie, they cheat, they stab you in the back, they rob from you, they lie. It's a lot of work, it's a 24-7. It's worse than taking care of children. These dogs need love, they need water, you know, they need to be fed, and I'm usually, usually I'm home. The only time I'm not home is if I'm going to the doctors or going grocery shopping. But I took good care of my dogs. People was actually coming here and handing them to me to save them and not put them to sleep. I was walking my dogs and some lady and guy asked me if I wanted these puppies. I had said no, but they couldn't keep them. So I ended up taking them. Then I've had them for like three weeks now and I've been feeding them um, puppy food, but I'm still doing the same thing that I've been doing, saving animals and and everything. So how many dogs do you have now? About 13. On, on this house? Or? Yeah. I just can't say no to animals. I mean, people, they let them go. And now look at these. These are, pu these are puppies. This one is a puppy and that one's a little puppy. I mean, how can you just throw them in the street? How can you do that? I mean, people are cold-hearted because ignorant and stupid people get animals and they want them for two or three days and then they throw them out in the middle of the street. Why don't you throw your baby out in the street? If they don't get water and they don't eat, what's going to happen? They're going to die. They shrink. They get all bony and stuff and they die. Does people think of that? No. It's cold, it's hotless, and it's ignorant. And will I stop doing this? No, I will not. This happened May 4th at four o'clock and I was not allowed back in my house till about 2.30 in the morning. I'm still waiting for a court date and I think it's too long. It's been a year and I'm very persistent and I didn't do nothing wrong. I haven't done anything wrong. I think that, you know, some rescues out there think they're above the law. Bill and I actually received a phone call from the sister of the owner um, wanting to know why we broke into her house and took her dogs and we informed her that we had nothing to do with it. Um, and she proceeded to tell us um, that, you know, they broke the door down and they made entry into the lady's house. The issue is, did Detroit Dog Rescue have a right to go in her home to help these dogs? Um, no, <laughs> they simply did not. Um, if they thought there was a real problem, um, then the proper avenue was to go through the police department and then through a judge. They broke my armor door, they broke the glass, they broke my side door, they broke the fence, they broke my screen door in my back, and they broke three windows over here at my house and then they also broke one, two, three, three screen doors over here. Indeed, it's a felony 
several felonies. Um, it's a home invasion. You go in somebody's house without permission to commit a crime, which is essentially what they did. Um, they, they stole these animals from her. That's a larceny. I mean, when you start doing that, you become a vigilante. And that's why we have laws and rights in place. And it's not up to me to decide whether it's right or wrong. It's up to me to investigate something, take the right action, and follow that legal course. They don't have any right, nor does anybody have any right, to go around the constitutional prohibition of, of the Fourth Amendment. They, you simply cannot, you cannot enter into somebody's home without permission for any purpose whatsoever. Like I said, I had 24 dogs up in my house. Half of them, some of them were mine, but people were giving them to me because they knew I would take good care of them. So I was introduced to this lady. She asked me if I needed any dog food, and I said, no, I do not. So she dropped off newspapers and dog treats every once in a while. Then she had asked me how many dogs I had in my house one time. I said, I don't think that's any of your business. Then she found out how many I had. Then she kept threatening me and kept threatening me if I don't surrender some of the dogs that she was gonna call the cops. I went down, tried to make a police report three times. The cops would not take none of my statements, kept telling me if anything ever happened, just to call them. And this lady kept calling me, calling me, kept calling me. And then she came over here and told me if I don't get help that she was going to have all my dogs taken. Whenever you're dealing with an, uh, an individual who is collecting animals, a hoarder, if they're hoarders, or has more animals than they can reasonably care for, or more animals than they should by city ordinance, or, or whatever the reason is, when they have a large number of animals in their house, you know, you automatically are dealing with a very complex situation. The recidivism rate for individuals that collect or hoard animals um, is always very, very high. So we realize right from the beginning, this isn't going to be a one-stop deal. You don't just go in, clean them out, and it never happens again. And I think you come to that conclusion over time. You know, you have somebody here that you're probably going to work with, and the best way to, to do that, if, if the animals are not in immediate dire straits, is to develop a relationship with that individual and try to work to manage their numbers with them. I just came back from the doctor's and me and my sister had went to go pick up some more dog food. My sister dropped me off. I went down to the canine and I went to Church's Chicken to grab, grab me a bite to eat. My phone's going off, my phone's going off. It's that Jennifer lady and it was these other rescue people. So I told them to go away. I answered the phone. They said that they were in front of my house. We are pulling many dogs from an abandoned house. That word right there, abandoned, is key to them, in their mind, getting into this house. Obviously, it's not an abandoned house. That is what makes sense here, because here on May 4th, we have Wags and Wishes posting, urgent, fosters needed now. And look, it was exactly at the time when it was going on. It's 8.06 p.m. She probably mm -hmm. posted, she probably Facebooked it right yeah, from her smartphone was, on the street. Yeah. You have people that all they want is results. I mean, you see people walk around all day long with their phones, updating their status on where they're at. and. It, it affects the way that we do business because now people are looking at us that, hey, why can't you do this? XYZ group goes out and they just snatch dogs and they get them out of that way. But in essence, what they're doing is stealing. And as an organization, we kind of hold ourselves to a higher standard. I called the cops three times before they showed up. Then I um, was coming over this way and there was a whole bunch of people over here. My dogs were out in the cages, they were walking my dogs, they were smoking a cigarette, laughing, carrying on, thinking it was funny. Cops was about to shoot him and Moosey because Dan Connell and Angie Potter got these two in a dog fight. I told them to not to put them two together, Chocolate and Moosey, and they got together and yeah, the cops had pulled out the gun, they were gonna shoot him. Um, one of the rescue people was like, no, you can't do that. And this one lady is over here hitting them with a piece of newspaper, like, like they're really going to be able to, you know, separate the dogs. The cops were like, I'm going to shoot them, I'm going to shoot them. People's like, no, no, don't. And there's little kids, there was kids there. They took 28 dogs. I heard that some of them was killed. Now, I don't know if they're dead. 
I don't know if they're alive. And these are all from Wags and Wishes website. Take a look at these because these are the dogs that they have listed on their website as being available for adoption or being have been adopted. Oh, that's my dog right there. That's. Oh. That's interesting. <laughs> no, that's ISIS. That's one of the ISIS. At least ISIS is getting a hug. People told me that it was the DDNR dog rescue or something. And they said that they rescue dogs off the street. Well, fine. Okay, you're doing that. That's a good job. That's good. But why are you coming over here and busting them in my house when my dogs were fine? But uh, they lied to me and tricked me and told me that I'd have to surrender the other dogs because... If I don't, then animal control was going to kill them. So I had to sign the piece of paper because they lied and tricked me, and I didn't know what to do, and I didn't want the other dogs dead. It says DDR, Detroit Dog Rescue, surrender receipt. The undersigned represents that he or she is the owner of the described animal or animals, and hereby surrenders the animal to Detroit Dog Rescue, and hereby consents to the immediate adoption or disposal of said animal. Well, well, I didn't understand this. My head was still spinning and all jib jab and everything. And she was like, you're going to have to surrender the dogs. I mean, I was like, what do you mean I have to surrender the dogs? I said, you stole my dogs. I promise to hold DDR harmless in connection with the adoption or disposal of said animal. Well, I guess I wasn't supposed to interact with these people, but I didn't know that. But they had came to my house. Hush came over to my house. He's the one with the dog rescue. Him, Angie Potter, and some other guy had came to my house. Bought me three dogs. I was so happy because I was lost. Because I was in the house by myself. And I was devastated I was lost without them. Ironically, they brought three dogs back, which is bizarre to me because if the animals were in such harm, why would they return any to that environment? They said, well, we're gonna return these dogs after the fact that they told me that I would never ever own a dog again, that they were gonna all be adopted out or given away or killed. I was excited and the dogs saw me and they were happy and they were barking. And she was like, well, if you don't surrender them, we're gonna kill them. We're gonna all kill all the dogs, even these three. She was like, well, you only got like five, 10 minutes. So I was freaking. She was essentially threatened into um, signing this piece of paper, which obviously doesn't make it a valid piece of paper, number one. Number two, um, there's no specificity as to what even kind of animals these are. It could be chipmunks. Um, <laughs> I mean, um, okay. So um, there's that, but um, this is essentially a way for a independent group to bully a citizen who has already been harmed. I still don't understand the piece of paper. I still, you know, because I was all whatever. I signed it because I didn't want the dogs dead. And I kept asking them why you did this. And she was like, and you're an animal hoarder. You don't feed them, you abuse them, you neglect them. Essentially, they take all of these animals out of the house, and then they show up a few days later and say, hey, give us full authority to um, have all these animals, or you're never going to be able to have an animal again. They're trying to get you to sign some piece of paper that really doesn't have much of a legal effect. But it, what it has is the effect of making the citizen feel that they've given up some rights and sometimes that's all you really need and that's essentially what this piece of paper does is it makes her feel that she doesn't have a right. I can't get over it. It's like an everyday thing haunting me always constantly. I just love animals and it's sad that these people throw out these dogs you know it hurts so bad it hurts it just keeps killing me I, I mean <laughs> for the past four years um my little sweet pea, sweet pea chica and I says, um, the whole crew. I don't like turkey that much, but I'd get a 25 pound turkey. 25 pound turkey. And, and I'd cook it, it and, I, and then I would boil up the ham. i boil up the ham, cut it all up, mix it up with the dog food. And the rescue people was telling me that I wasn't feeding them. The purpose for which the corporation, that would be Detroit Dog Rescue, is organized is to sponsor, plan, organize, and carry out the functions and activities related to the rescue and placement of abused, unwanted, and abandoned dogs in the city of Detroit. This is what Detroit Dog Rescue has written themselves. According to their mission, they're only here to deal with abused, unwanted, and abandoned. Well, these animals clearly weren't abused. 
Um, you can look at the pictures, and even these people would admit that they, I mean, I'm assuming they would admit because the dogs were in good health, they were well-fed. You have somebody who's essentially engaged in the same mission as they are, but they don't like it. It's almost like they want to do it their way, and um, they want to have certain rules. Uh, and if that includes killing some of the dogs, um, you know, that's what they've decided is, is okay. She's trying to help the dogs. Detroit Dog Rescue is trying to help the dogs. Um, work together, not against one another. You don't, you, you know, you don't get to do. You don't get to say you're not doing what I want you to do, and I'm going to take your dogs then because I don't agree. We can't allow these vigilante groups to run around like this. You're here because you love animals. Help save a life today. Your donation will send the World Animal Awareness Society team on our next mission. From all of us here at the World Animal Awareness Society and WA2S Films. Thank you for watching The Rescuer's DNA. We'll see you next time. It's an animal world out there. Watch the World Animal Awareness Society channel and feel right at home. Come, sit, subscribe, and stay a while.